Lumbrokinase and natokinase, these are actually basically clot breaking agents. They're designed to degrade the, uh, the clots themselves. And there are some actually, uh, I would call it preliminary or early research on these that is actually quite promising from a cardiovascular perspective. And I don't think the data is solid enough um, right now to be recommending it widely on a population basis. But it certainly fits very well with the mechanistic data that we have. And it's certainly very promising and there's nothing we've seen to suggest that it won't work. There's some uh, suggestive links. Now understand that this is not proof, but there's some suggestive links that glyphosate exposure may be associated with autism spectrum disorder. One thing we do know for certain though, is that gestational diabetes absolutely is associated. There's been, uh, at last count, there was uh, 17 associational studies, I think that was a couple of years ago when I was looking at it, that showed some connection between gestational diabetes and autism. Now, I don't know if anybody's uh, done the randomized controlled trial. Good luck getting that one through ethics. Um, so unfortunately, when I said that observational research does have a place in science, this is the place when it's just absolutely going to be impossible for us to actually do an experiment. And sometimes we just have to take the best research we've got. Um, but there is, uh, there's a very strong signal that would be suggesting uh, gestational diabetes to be a problem. And we know this because the baby's neuronal development as a fetus, it's, it's critically impacted by the mother's health. And if the mother's gestational diabetic, presumably extra oxidation stress and all these other things going on, it's only logical that that would adversely impact on the development of that child. Uh, occasionally, you see people posting on social media that they've had low vitamin C. Now, the only cases of low vitamin C that I've seen in clinic have been false. Vitamin C is very unstable as a blood test. When we take the blood, it needs to be popped on ice in a certain tube, and if it's not, it breaks down, and when it gets to the lab and they look for it, they can't find it. So every case of vitamin D deficiency that I've been presented with, I have corrected by highlighting on the blood test form, place sample on ice. Um, so that was an easy fix. Um, so vitamin C deficiency, I don't believe exists. I have actually come across what I do genuinely believe to be a case of copper deficiency in a carnivore. Now, if you actually uh, look uh, at the government websites, so I was actually reading an article on this uh, yesterday, we do actually, with the nutrient depletion of soil, this does not just affect plant foods, it affects animals that are raised on those soils as well. And in large swathes of Australia, we know we have areas of copper deficiency. The same is tr also true for boron. So in the central tablelands of New South Wales with the very high rainfall, that tends to deplete the soil of boron. So I think it is plausible and I've certainly seen a case on somebody who I know was a diligent carnivore who appeared to have deficient copper levels. Now that may have been some kind of genetic defect in the absorption of copper, or it could also have easily reflected the fact that they were diligent about only consuming meat from one particular farm. So I think across the population, if you're sort of getting your, your sources of food from different localities, that will reduce the risk of that. But we know that nutrient depletion in soil is a real problem, and presumably that will also transfer through the foods we eat.